Welcome to Morning Star. I'm Larissa Fernand, and with me today is Sankara Naren, the Chief Investment Officer and Executive Director at ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Today, Naren will share with us insights that go beyond the analytical model of money management. Naren, thank you so much for being so obliging. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure talking to you and Morning Star. Thank you. Thank you so much. Naren, tell me about your evolution as a fund manager. And by that, I mean you have been decades. You have spent decades in this industry. You have seen market cycles. You have learned so much. You were managing small amounts of money to now humongous amounts of money. This must have impacted you psychologically, mentally, emotionally. How, how, do, how has it panned out? Actually, I work for a big institution called ICICI. So you were starting with small amount of money in 2004, but the brand and performance helped us to get uh, large sums of money. So the evolution was gradual. So slowly as, uh, as the industry evolved, as we had performance, the amounts kept increasing. So it was a continuous process. So I don't think uh, it happened all of a sudden. It was a continuous journey all the way from 2004 to 2023. And it was not uh, something which happened all of a sudden. So if you look at how the mutual fund industry evolved, thanks to good regulation, good performance, and uh, the way the company evolved in ICSAI, it's been a steady growth from 2004 to 2023. Okay, then let me paraphrase that question. What would you do differently today? How would you handle money differently today than what you did, say, a decade ago? See, clearly the scale of money management has uh, changed substantially. And, uh, and what happens is that uh, I would say that uh, we are managing much larger sums of money. And given that, you know, we need to manage larger sums of money, uh, we have to be very conscious of the fact that uh, we should manage it very responsibly. And we have launched uh, different kinds of strategies which help us to manage larger sums of money as well. I would say that the real things happened between 2007, 8, 9. The global financial crisis taught us a lot of things and uh, helped us to manage the larger sums of money from 2013 to 2023. If you look at the real growth in this industry, it started exactly 10 years back in 2013, July. And uh, we were well prepared for it because we had seen what happened in the world between 2007 to 9. How has your mindset changed? Do you feel much more responsible now that the amounts are humongous? Or did you have the same sense of responsibility as you did back in 2003? I think uh, if you don't have responsibility, you could not have grown. And I think it is very important to be responsible whether you are managing small sum of money or large sum of money. And on a continuing basis, it is necessary to show that responsibility and act responsibly. So I don't think it dependent on how much money you managed. And I believe that uh, it is very important uh, that on a continuing basis, you have to stay responsible. Uh, and uh, it is just that the kind of strategies, if you look at the mutual fund industry between 2004 and seven, particularly on the retail side, it was just an equity mutual fund industry. And uh, there was no concept of hybrid funds or categories like balanced advantage fund or multi-asset or debt at that point of time. So the whole industry has evolved from 2004 onwards till 2023. And your mindset, would you take more risk now or less risk now as you did earlier? Or No, clearly, if you look at it, uh, the risk has to be taken at the level of the product. And that's what uh, the whole uh, okay. the whole riskometers uh, which the regulator has brought in is also to show that the risk is not taken at the level of the industry. The risk is taken at the level of the product. And uh, that is something uh, which you have to keep in mind. You're not taking risk at the level of the industry. The level of the industry, if you start taking risk at 40 lakh crores, it would be really irritating. So you would take it at the level of the industry. So you have products like overnight fund, which would be really low risk. On the other hand, you would have uh, very risky products in some of the equity strategies. So it would be very different. 
Okay. Uh, what makes you stay in this in this fiduciary capacity? You could be a very very successful individual investor. You could create huge amounts of wealth for yourself. You would have no stress, no pressure, no need to follow processes, no accountability to anyone. Why? What makes you stay in this industry? Actually, when I joined the industry in 2004, I had actually spent 10 years in stockbroking and I had worked for 15 years totally prior to joining ICSA Mutual Fund. There was a thrill in uh, looking after other people's money all the way from Kashmir to Kanyakumari or from Dwarka to Guwahati. And, uh, you know, having seen the broking industry uh, from 94 to 2004, I felt that the mutual fund industry was a much better way to actually manage other people's money. Because uh, when you are in the broking industry, you can only be in the advisory side. Essentially, you can tell people uh, how to actually uh, invest, but they do it the, their way. And I had a miserable experience watch people lose money from 99 to 2001 and also in 94 to 96. So after that experience, when I got a chance to actually manage other people's money, not advise other people's money. So I thought it was a very, very good opportunity. And uh, clearly, ICSA is one of the best brands in the industry to manage other people's money. And that's why uh, it brought me to join this uh, firm in 2004. Do many investors write to you and tell you how they benefited? Bio? Some write and some, you know, when you happen to meet them uh, socially or in a flight or in a train or something like that, you can really see that today you have, uh, you are managing a number of other people's money at this point of time. And it is not just small, it's a very large number of people. How does that make you feel? It does make you feel happy. And yeah. there are people who tell you that uh, I could do this because of the mutual fund investment that you did in ICSA mutual fund. I could do this, I could do that, I could educate my son. I could, uh, I could handle this crisis in this family and I could do this, I could do that. So it's a really happy feeling when you hear that actually. There's uh, uh, um, taking off on the issue of accountability, you're always being watched. You're being watched by a board, by your management, by your peers, the competition, your colleagues, the investors. Then you have the eccentricities of the market. How, I have two questions for this. How do you manage expectations and how do you keep how, how do you maintain mental stability with this constant pressure? So actually in the first few years it becomes very, it's very tough and uh, I would say, you know, slowly over a period of time, what happens is that uh, you reduce expectations. So on a continuing basis, uh, the job is to lower expectations. And once you lower expectations, uh, what happens is, uh, you are actually telling people that, uh, so for example, if our funds are doing well, you say that you're not going to do well in the future because as the regulator says, you know, past is not equal to future. So you keep reducing expectations and reduce the stress of people watching you, asking you questions. And one of the biggest advantages of having worked in one institution for the last 19 years is you have seen ups and downs. It's not that you haven't seen downs. So when you are an up, you keep telling them about the downs you have seen in this company. And when you in your downs, you talk about how after the downs, you have always shown ups. So with that kind of a framework, actually, it has been easier. But I won't say it's easy in the first few years. It's very tough in the first few years. So I would say the 2000, year 2007 was one of the most difficult because it was a very irrational market. And I think uh, as long as, as soon as 2007 was managed, I think after that it has been very easy. Because you now know how to show people that in the long run uh, it has been possible for you to give a reasonable investor experience. So I think now it's much easier, but it wasn't easy in the beginning. And today, if you look at it, the vast body of investors, finally the investor is the boss of the mutual fund industry. They recognize that uh, you will see through downs, then after that you will see ups. And uh, that is something they accept at this point of time. What gives you sleepless nights? See, I think uh, the advantage, the biggest advantage has been that uh, the team in the, the investment team has been very stable and uh, we have had uh, 
a very good team which has not given me sleepless nights we have not had credit issues of a, over a long period of time i would say those have been the positives we rarely worry about markets frankly people ask me does markets give you sleepless nights no because i think markets are going to go through ups and downs and uh, so i don't think uh, that has really given me sleepless night the fact that you have a good team and you've been working with that team and the team has always supported you has always been the best part and uh, the fact that you know the people above me in the company the distributors the investors have always supported us as al- always is given us peace of mind so i think uh, i would say that as long as you don't have uh, any ethical issues or anything of that kind uh, it's very very comfortable and that's what you have to work for we have to finally work in icsa for brand trust and reputation nothing else other than that and what do you work for same thing absolutely the same thing because i think markets in india will deliver over the long run we have a investment process also which will deliver over the long run so this is the challenge and some of these things are not in one's hand it's not in my hand we can work to explain to people that this is what is needed mm. you know when i look at social media you're not on social media but when i look at social media it's very clear that people are very sensitive and they take to offense very quickly whether it's a strategy or their stock or their investments or anything so we live in a very polarized world that outrages very quickly and this impacts the way we think how does it impact you how do you maintain objectivity by not looking at social media <laughs> i think if you're not on social media you have a lot of peace of mind and uh, the fact is see you have to be committed to a nice process investment process you have to focus on the investment process you have to be conscious that you are managing other people's money you have to manage it in the best way possible that you know then you will keep making mistakes you are not doing arithmetic you are doing investment so then do it in the right way but is it possible to be object completely objective it isn't right it isn't possible to be uh, completely objective there will be articles written when you are doing badly that you are uh, doing badly and you have to read it and accept it so it is not possible to be completely objective but then you have to ask yourself could you have done it better and uh, part of it is that you have to continuously introspect and keep improving and if you know how to improve based on your introspection like in the year 2007 we learned that investment is not about bottom up alone it is about bottom up and top down and after that we did work on learning about something about top down in the world and uh, so i would say then we learned that top down and bottom up makes up markets so like that you keep introspecting you keep learning from your past mistakes you keep hoping that you will make newer mistakes not the old mistakes and investing is not a zero mistake world so if people believe that uh, investing is uh, a zero mistake world you look at even a guru like warren buffett he made mistakes in tesco he made mistakes in ibm uh, he made mistakes in airline industry etc so i believe that uh, this is not an industry where anyone can come and tell you that i i i've never made a mistake it's just not possible which is a bias that you've had which you worked on and now you no longer contend with it so i think uh, the biggest challenge has been that i was always a more value oriented investor and here i was managing other people's money for a lot of other people's money so it was not acceptable that we run only value oriented strategies so what i did sensibly was get along people in my company who were not only value oriented and give them space to run non value oriented strategies whether it is growth oriented or quality oriented strategies and allow them to pursue it and some of my younger colleagues had uh, sensibly been able to pursue good growth oriented and quality oriented strategies it's not easy because if you are a contrarian doesn't mean everyone else in the team should be contrarian and uh, it was one of the best things that we could do and that helped us a lot because if the whole company was seen as a contrarian house i don't think we could have managed so much of public money to the extent that we are managing today and giving space to some of the colleagues in my team to pursue their styles 
while at the same time creating alpha for the investor was one of the best decisions I think uh, we could do. You spoke about how uh, when you meet people, some of them say how well they've succeeded because you manage their money. You are hugely successful. Everyone knows you. How do you keep grounded? How do you not let ego come into play? I don't know whether that's an answer, but certainly if you ask me, in my case, I'll tell you I have a special child. And that actually has helped me keep grounded because you can see the problems every day. So that keeps me grounded. Thank you. Thank you for that. What makes you feel insecure? I think the problems associated with my special child. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, this question is now, you, you bring a lot of skill, intelligence, hard work to the table. There are processes, there's the reading, you do everything. But in the entire scheme of things, there is always that gut feel, that intuition, there's luck, there's karma. In the whole scheme of things, how do you view this? I think it's definitely there. Uh, you know, there is a past understanding of cycles, which is very, very useful. And uh, over the last 30 years, uh, you've seen different cycles, you've seen euphoria, you've seen complete busts. So that helps you to actually take certain decisions. So if you look at in the peak of COVID in March 2020, as an AMC, we would have invested in the month of March 2020, 10,000 crores in equity. And uh, I would say that uh, that quantum of money that was invested came out of a past understanding of cycles. And I think, uh, so that comes out of a gut that markets will finally turn around. And you know, if you had looked at what people were saying in March 2020, in the peak of COVID, that the world has changed and maybe the world will end. And uh, that gut certainly helps, frankly. So I think a past understanding of cycles, past under understanding of how promoters behave, past understanding of how uh, different companies behave does help you. And uh, in return, what happens is you don't know many of the things that very well. There was a time, let's say 20 years back, my knowledge of bottom up of many companies was much, much better than what it is today. Has luck played a role? Luck is an integral part of <laughs> investing. Uh, but would I say that over a 20 year period, luck played a role in alpha? The answer is no. Does luck play a role in life? The answer is certainly. So, but does luck play a role in three month alpha? I think 100%. Does luck play a role in 20 year alpha? I would say very low. But luck plays a very, very big, luck and fate plays a very, very big role in life all the time. And that's a, this is the experience I've seen in my life. Okay, there's one question which I find very cliched and I hate it if somebody had to ask me that, but I'm going to ask you. If you had to, starting out in your career with all the knowledge you have today, what would you tell your younger self? Become a fund manager. Really? You but, love it that uh, but much? But I don't know how the artificial intelligence world will uh, make a fund manager, but I would say become a fund manager, but also have understanding of artificial intelligence. And are you studying artificial intelligence a lot no, now? No, unfortunately. No? <laughs> but that's the advice you would give your younger self. Yes. Okay. I think that's about it. Once again, Naren, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. This is Larissa for Morningstar. Thank you so much for watching.